Oggi, secondo me, stiamo assistendo, non è un paradosso, al grande successo del mondo. Qual è la manifestazione più completa del grande successo del mondo? La Grecia. La cultura della stabilità, il presidente Ciampi richiamava sempre la cultura della stabilità tedesca, si sarebbe diffusa un po' per volta a tutti. Quale caso di scuola si sarebbe mai potuto immaginare? Il caso di una Grecia che dà, è costretta a dare abbastanza peso alla cultura della stabilità che sta trasformando se stessa. We economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire. And we work many different ways. But perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations but really don't help the majority of the people at all. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan, that they can't repay it. And so at some point, we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debt, so sell your oil real cheap to our oil companies. Allow us to build a military base in your country or send troops in support of ours to some place in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote to have their electric utility company privatized and their water and sewage system privatized and sold to U.S. corporations or other multinational corporations. So there was that whole mushrooming thing, and it's so typical of the way the IMF and the World Bank work. They put a country in debt, and it's such a big debt it can't pay it, and then you offer to refinance that debt and, and, and pay even more interest. And you demand this quid pro quo, which you call a conditionality or good governance, which means basically that they've got to sell off their resources, in, in, including many of their social services, their utility companies, their school systems sometimes, their, their, their penal systems, their insurance systems to foreign corporations. So it's a, it's a double, triple, quadruple whammy. Iraq actually is a perfect example of the way the whole system works. So we economic hitmen are the first line of defense. We go in and we try to corrupt governments and, and get them to accept these huge loans, which we then use as leverage to basically own them. If we fail, as I failed in, in Panama with Omar Torrijos and in Ecuador with Jaime Roldos, men who refuse to be corrupted, then the second line of defense is we send in the jackals. And the jackals either overthrow governments or they assassinate. And once that happens and a new government comes in, boy, it's going to toe the line because the new president knows what will happen if he doesn't. In the case of Iraq, uh, both of those things failed. Economic hitmen were not able to get through to Saddam Hussein. We tried very hard. We tried to get him to accept a deal very similar to what the House of Saud had accepted in Saudi Arabia, but he wouldn't accept it. And so the jackals went in to take him out. They couldn't do it. His security was very good. Um, after all, he had one time worked for the CIA. He'd been hired to assassinate a former president of, of, of Iraq and failed, but he knew the system. So in 91, we send in the troops and we take out the Iraqi military. So we assume at that point that Saddam Hussein is going to come around. We could have taken him out, of course, at that time, but we didn't want to. He's the kind of strong man we like. He controls his people. He could, we thought he could control the Kurds and keep the Iranians in their border and keep pumping oil for us. And then once we took out his military, now he's going to come around. So the economic hitmen go back in in the 90s without success. If they'd had success, he'd still be running the country. We'd be selling him all the fighter jets he wants and everything else he wants. But they couldn't. They, they, they didn't have success. The jackals couldn't take him out again. So we sent the military in once again, and this time we did the complete job and took him out and in the process created for ourselves some very, very lucrative construction uh, deals. We had to reconstruct a country that we essentially destroyed, which is a pretty good deal if you own construction companies, big ones. So, you know, Iraq shows the three stages. The economic hitmen failed there, the jackals failed there, and as a final measure, 
the military goes in. And in that way, we've really created an empire, but we've done it very, very subtly. It's clandestine. All the empires of the past were built on the military, and everybody knew they were building them. So the, the British knew they were building them, the French, the Germans, the, the Romans, the, the Greeks, and they were proud of it. And they always had some excuse like spreading civilization, spreading some religion, something like that. But they, they knew they were doing it. We don't. The majority of the people in the United States have no idea that we're living off the benefits of a clandestine empire, that today there's more slavery in the world than ever before. And then you have to ask yourself, well, if it's, if it's an empire, then who's the emperor? Obviously, our presidents of the United States are not emperors. An emperor is someone who's not elected, doesn't serve a limited term, and doesn't report to anyone, essentially. So you can't classify our presidents that way. But we do have what I consider to be the equivalent of the emperor, and it's what I call the corporatocracy. The corporatocracy is this group of individuals who run our biggest corporations, and they really act as the emperor of this empire. Um, they control our media, either through direct ownership or advertising. They control most of our uh, politicians because they finance their campaigns, either through their corporations or through personal contributions that come out of the corporations. They're not elected, and they don't serve a limited term, they don't report to anybody. And at the very top of the corporatocracy, you really can't tell whether a person's working for a private corporation or the government because they're always moving back. Mm -hmm.